Hello, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you're listening to .NET Rocks. We run all of our servers on Linux with open source software, but Carl has assured me that they're going to be changing over very soon. Uh, what can I say? This is Carl Franklin in New London, Connecticut, and in New London, Connecticut, my co-host, Mark Dunn. Hi there, Carl. How are you doing today? You are actually here with us in the well, studio. Heck yeah, I know how you're doing today. It's a great day here in New London. It's beautiful. Beautiful day. Uh, how are you, uh, listeners out there? We'd uh, like to extend a laurel and hearty handshake ah. to you. Hey, Mark, I got a, a couple of uh, emails. As you know, we get lots of emails. Yeah, here. we get tons of emails. Lots and lots of letters. And uh, I got one from Rob Windsor, who says, Hey, Carl and Mark, loved having a black and tan with you. Well, he's the only one, apparently. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> at least we got one positive email about that show. <laughs> However, the cop that pulled me over while I was doing it didn't think it was such a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been an ex-Java guy. Ooh. Oh, no. Anyway, just thought I'd let you in on a variation to the command line CD tip that you gave during the show. If you type CD and then the first few letters of the folder name you're looking for, the tab key will cycle through all of the folder names that match the initial few characters you typed in. Cool. And I I didn't know that. Yeah, and it works. Um, this works with other commands as well, and I find I use it all the time. As always, thanks for the show, Rob Windsor, Toronto Visual Basic User Group, co-founder, president, and webmaster. Thank you very much, Rob. Yeah, thanks very much. And uh, I also got a l rather, rather lengthy email from a Rick Byers who had some more input on the shadows keyword. In VBNet. Remember we were talking about the shadows keyword right. with Amanda and Paul? Yeah. Hey, Carl, love your show. I finally managed to catch up on all the back issues just when you guys switched to bi-weekly, so I've gone from listening to four shows a week down to one every two weeks. So I'm a bit, I'm in a bit of state of withdrawal here. <laughs> so anyway, he was listening to the interview with Amanda Silver and Paul Vick. Uh, an excellent show, even though I'm a C-sharp guy. It sounded like there was a little confusion over the shadows keyword in VBNet, so I thought I'd chip in with my understanding. This is actually a question I sometimes ask in an interview to see if the candidate really understands all aspects of their language. I have yet to have anyone actually answer correctly. Interesting. Wow. First of all, I don't know a lot. So, hey, there's a, a nice tip for you, you know, if you're going yeah. on an interview. Yeah, know what Shadows does. Yeah, right. Uh, especially if it's with Rick Byers. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, first of all, I don't know a lot of VBNet, so I'm assuming shadows is the same as C-sharp key, new keyword. From what I've read, this appears to be the case, but it is not really a VB or C-sharp issue, but an IL issue. Both the shadows keyword in VBNet and the new keyword in C-sharp work hand-in-hand -hand with the overrides keyword to influence the use of the IL token new slot, which tells the CLR to always create a new slot in the V table for the method. If you create a new overridable method, it uses new slot by default. So in a sense, any virtual method that doesn't explicitly override a method from the base with overrides has shadows enabled by default. As you discovered, this doesn't exactly and actually let you override a not overridable or sealed method. It creates a new method entirely unrelated to the method in the base class, except that they happen to have the same name. Right. As Paul was discussing, this is entirely a versioning issue. The casting problem you mentioned is actually precisely the intended behavior. To extend Paul's example a little, imagine you've got a component bar that is a subclass of some other vendor's foo component. You create a method X on bar, which you declare overridable or virtual in C-sharp. Since X is something new you created, you know exactly when and where you're calling it. Now Foo version 2 comes out, and it happens to also have an overridable method called X. Well, if you're using Java or C++, which don't have such a concept, when you recompile bar against Foo version 2, suddenly your bar.x, which is totally unrelated to the new Foo.x, is being called in situations you didn't design it to be called. And Foo.x isn't getting called at all. Mm. When you wrote bar.x, you knew nothing about the future method Foo.x, and the person that wrote foo.x knew nothing about your bar.x, so having bar.x override foo.x is very dangerous. Things get even worse if you've got customers using your bar.x and you just can't rename it without breaking their code. 
This is called the fragile base class problem and can be a very real problem in C++ and Java. This is very cool, huh? It is very this cool. I took the time to write this uh, great article and explain it. Yeah, very well thought out, too. You yeah. Know. We'll have a uh, – uh, that's not the entire thing. Um, we'll have to send him a hat or something. Yeah, we'll have man. to send him a hat. Um, and uh, hats we have. We do have I'm, hats. I'm wearing one right now, as a matter of fact. You are. Show your support for the show. Go get some useless junk. Yeah. Needless crap. How about you, Robert? Have you got a hat yet? Oh, yeah. We'll send you one. Robert Scoble, ladies and gentlemen, our guest. Uh, how should we introduce you, man? Um, <laughs> the weblogger at Microsoft. I don't that's know. Right. The, uh, I, I guess the author of the Scobalizer weblog. The Scobalizer weblog. Yep. And, and I'm uh, a technical evangelist with the Longhorn team. Right. Now you are. You've recently moved on to Microsoft. Yep. When you were on the show last, you were a call-in guest. I believe it was on... Uh, was it Nick Landry's show? Yeah, that's right. We we're doing mobile computing, and Robert was. Uh, you were doing something with an NEC tablet, tablet PC. Yep. yep. How'd that turn out? Awesome. I I wish I had mine. <laughs> and you worked at NEC. They took it away from me when I went to Microsoft. <laughs> okay. You worked at NEC at the time, we should say. <laughs> yeah, and it's still. It's like having your stripes stripped away in the army or something. <laughs> yeah. And break your sword. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> So you're it's, now. I have a Toshiba tablet now, and it's twice as heavy. So yeah, <laughs> carrying it around the house isn't as fun. <laughs> right, probably twice as powerful too, huh? Uh, not really. It's a 1.3 gigahertz, if I remember mm. right. Yeah. Where the NEC was a 933. It was, so it was actually hard to tell the difference in the performance. Right. Uh, the Toshiba though has a keyboard, so you can use it both as a tablet and as a regular laptop. Yeah. Well, tell the listeners how uh, we hooked up in the first place. Oh, geez. <laughs> I was uh, planning conferences, or actually, I think we met when I was an editor with Visual Basic Programmers Journal. Right. And uh, helping out with the VBIS conference back in the uh, early days. Back in the fun days. Oh, yeah. Back the in, good old days. Yeah. Back in the days before internet, actually. That's right. <laughs> actually, before the web. <laughs> and, before anybody uh, knew what it was, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I remember uh, you were the first guy to show me uh, the web. And, uh, really? And I did it in uh, class. At VBits in what 1994? You hadn't you hadn't seen the internet before then. I mean, granted, uh, I'd nobody seen did. it, but not really. And um, most wow. of the people in the class certainly hadn't seen the web, and certainly didn't understand the power of it. Yeah. And I I remember you you were showing the uh, I don't know you were you were going through a bunch of little demos about what the web can do, and right. one of the demos he did was uh, a weather uh, yeah. map of a, a radar map. Me- you know, map of uh, the satellite that photo was coming into San Francisco at that time. Yeah, it was a satellite. And, yeah, and everybody just got the entire room just gasped because there was this huge storm. <laughs> That's right. In fact, it's probably it's still one of the biggest storms in the last ten years. It was huge. <laughs> it was, the next morning, the the hotel was flooded and the power was out. <laughs> it's un, it's unbelievable that nobody knew it was coming. Yeah, because we, well, we would all, we'd all been sitting in conferences all day long, right, totally yeah. oblivious to the outside world, and mostly coming from different places too. So they all come to this place. You know, we get in in this uh, thing, and I said, "Oh yeah, and you can download satellite images. Look, this program puts it on the desktop. You know, every yeah, five right. minutes, I think it was, makes it your desktop image." Yeah, that was pretty pretty incredible. Yeah, that was and awesome. I thought they were clapping for me, but they were gasping. No, we were, actually, we weren't clapping. We were going, "Oh my God, we got to get out of here!" I thought, I thought they were in awe of the software. You know, <laughs> every, every people were leaving, going to find flights out. <laughs> yeah, they're going, yelling, oh my God, game we're over. Be... <laughs> I mean, it literally was just a band. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could see this huge storm coming at us, and we were going, "Oh, great!" Everybody was going to be stuck in San Francisco for four days. <laughs> you know, <'cause, laughs> San Francisco, for anybody who doesn't know, San Francisco Airport usually shuts down whenever there's fog. So it's like, right, right. Uh, they only have one <laughs> runway that they can take planes off. And Up here in New England, it's like, squalls are coming, get your raincoat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was another um, demo that I did. It, it wasn't necessarily the the web, although that was a web. That may have even been a gopher site that we were getting stuff off at that point. Yeah, possibly. Um. Uh, the other thing that I did that was fun was I had a I wrote a chat program. This is 1994, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I wrote a chat program and I chatted with Gary uh, Wisniewski, who was in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Through the chat program, and he said hi to the people. Yep. And you know, like like you would be logged into a bulletin board would be the only 
thing that you could compare it to at the time. You know, the average PC user, I'm sure the people who were doing the internet, you know, back then in the colleges and government agencies were were doing all that stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. the very first V bits that ever ran. I mean, no, I, no, 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 was it? No, it was V-bits, like the third one, I think. V bits started in what ninety two. Yeah. So it was it, the second. It was the third one because it was over at the Hyatt, over by uh, Freeway one hundred and one. Right. Um, yeah. And the first one was in the Marriott, so it was either the second or the third one. I, I think it started in ninety three, actually. So. Yeah. I did the first one. I remember I did a talk on animation, sprite animation, which was funny yeah. because. Uh, in Alan Cooper's show, he was telling how he showed some animation to uh, Bill. Right, right. And Bill goes, how'd you do that? Yeah. And I'm like, shit, I was doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I was doing this animations thing. And, uh, of course, much l- later than Alan Cooper was. And yeah. I had a little Pac-Man running across the screen and stuff like that. And I was showing people how to do it. And there was this uh, – we were in San Francisco, right? Yep. So there was this effect that if you didn't clean up the screen after you drew the frame – your frame that you're going to draw, it would leave trails. Mm -hmm. And I said, and that would leave trails. And then I thought, which, you know, for some of you might cause horrible flashbacks, uh, San Francisco, (laughs) you know, um, yep. Horrible flashbacks. So anyway, that was, that was a big joke. Yeah. I mean, the conference world has sure changed in 10 years. I mean, now everybody brings their laptop to conferences and yeah, we have uh, web logs where people are publish are going to publish right from the PDC. But know? it's funny. There's about as many people at conferences now as there was in the first day. Yeah, yeah. In other True. words, four hundred. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, we're aiming at. Uh, it looks like we're going to sell out, so we're going to have about seven thousand people at the PDC this year. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, yeah that's be awesome. A pretty big show. So, uh, blogging. Yeah, Where, you got into. You were the first person I knew who got into blogging. Yeah, I did it fairly early on. I there was already a group of maybe 500 or 1000 tech bloggers. I started about three and a half years ago. And um I was helping uh, Dan Schaefer plan the uh, cnetbuilder.com conference and I kept talking to speakers about what we what they should uh you know what we should talk about. And we kept saying, "Hey, you should do a, a session on blogging. It's the hottest thing you know and i'm going what the hell is a blog <laughs> <Right. laughs> of course all my friends are asking me that now so yeah, later, right. later, so. right. Right. but uh dory smith had one and you know dave weiner and uh at date i had hired dave to do a keynote <laughs> he was i started reading him and started getting into the whole thing hmm. but uh uh yeah so i started it three and a half years ago or so and Within two weeks, I'd gotten invited to Steve Wozniak's Super Bowl party. <laughs> and had, wow. You know, I already built up, I guess, you know, 500,000 readers, you know, a day on some good days, you know, in just a couple of weeks. And I go, oh, my God, there's something to this. <laughs> well, every everyone I know, Robert, reads your blog. Thanks. You know? <laughs> I, it's true. I try. It's, uh, it's a little bit, it's, it's uh, interesting <laughs> how you can just write, you know, every day and have people uh, read you, you know. Yeah. So scobalizer.net. That's not the actual URL, is it? No, it's scobal.weblogs.com. Now, you know, we had some interesting First of all, let's for for those people out there who who are still new to blogs and there's probably a lot. Why don't you just give the quintessential definition of what a blog is? Yeah, I mean it it's a personal website, um, really. I mean, I, the, the technology has been around for eight years to do these things. It's just now that it's gotten robust enough and popular enough that there's a huge community doing it. Um, generally, it's um, a, a website done by one person, and it's uh, stored in reverse chrono- chronological order. So if I post now and then in five minutes I post again, the newer post will be on top of the older post. Um, really the phenomenon of blogging took off because, uh, I mean, if you compare it to like front doing a website and front page or Dreamweaver or, or hand coding it in Notepad, um, that was fairly tough to do, especially when you want to post a lot in a very short period of time. Right. It's almost for making things that are going to be st- static. Right. So the key number one there is that it has to be easy to p- publish, uh, very rapidly. Um, if you look at any of the blogging tools, you, you you know you type in a little area and then you hit post and it's live. It goes live. You don't have to worry about FTPing your, any files up. You don't have to 
worry about writing HTML. You just type, you hit post, and it's live. Right. So anybody can do it. That that was key number one. That you know a truck truck driver could do a blog now, uh, not just a geek who knew HTML. Where right. back in the front page days, you really had to understand that there was a concept of a server that you know that what came down in the web browser was a little file, and you had to have some sort of concept of what, how the system worked. And, and also, they, you had to have the the time to deal with it. Yeah. And you had to learn how it worked, and I remember learning how to do HTML, and it, you know, it, it's a fairly e easy thing to learn, but when you haven't seen it before, it takes some time it takes to learn it. Um, certainly, right. uh, my mom and my dad don't don't know how to do it. Right. So, yeah, most uh, truck drivers on it don't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most truck drivers would say, "What the hell's a blog anyway?" <laughs> Something on the road. So, so right. and the second thing that that happened was. Um, weblogs.com. So Dave Weiner n knew that he wanted to be able to watch all the blogs that were going on and see when they posted. Um, so he started, his blog tools would ping weblogs.com. And if you go to weblogs.com, you'll see um, thousands of blogs and you'll see them as they post. So if I posted right now, you'd see my blog at the top. And if right. you posted, then you'd, you'd be on top of me. And then if Mark posted, he'd be on top of both of us. So that was magical for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, Dave Weiner and other people who had, you know, the A-list blogs, they call them, or um, blogs that watch a lot of people would just sit there and watch what, what was going on. You know, particularly in a uh, rapidly evolving news sit situation like 9-11, that's what we both were doing. We were just right. sitting there watching weblogs.com as people mm. commented to see what the news was and see, you know, because we couldn't get to any of the news sites. So we were relying on people talking from their own computer. Wow, sort of like the uh, ham radio thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, that also uh, gave Google an advantage because G Google Spider could just visit that page and instantly find you Yeah. Um, and spider your site. So now you're on Google. Now you're getting traffic. Um, a good example of this is uh, this week we just opened uh, – Robert McLaws opened um, – some Longhorn web blogs, right? Longhornblogs.com. And instantly we were getting traffic and getting comments in our comment area without telling anybody about our blog. Right, because there were spiders no, out there. We had done no advertising. We had, we had told literally nobody, but because we were in weblogs.com, we were already getting traffic. Hmm. Um, and also now new services like Technorati or Daypop or Feedster can watch weblogs.com and, and spider those sites for their own purposes. Um, yeah, you told me about Feedster. Yeah. I was uh, it was great. I just I am you. Hey, is there a Yahoo, is there a Google like for blogs and Yeah, yeah it, RSS here. is the third thing that made web blogs really different than, you know, a front page site. Right. Um, because I could when I publish now, when I hit post, uh, my tool creates both an HTML file and a XML or an RSS file. Right. And that file then can be uh, subscribed to by uh, news aggregators. And for instance, I have in Outlook, I have a um, NewsGator is my t tool that I use. And uh, I have 536 weblogs that I watch wow. automatically. So every hour, my little NewsGator goes out and grabs anything that's new and puts it in there. And then I, I can go through and see what people are talking about. It's a very powerful way to uh, build a community. You know, and that's really what what happened different than you know just putting up a front page site. Right. It's like when I did my net meeting site, you know, I put it up there and nobody, I I didn't get any any feedback. You know, it's like oh okay, how do I get people to visit this thing? Well, I had to tell people about it. You know, so and to get it onto back then Google didn't exist, so to get it on Yahoo and Alta Vista, I had to beg. You know, can you please spider my site? You know, I had to do a lot of work to to make this thing happen. You don't need to uh, work yeah. at all. I mean, a friend, Zane Thomas, uh, who owns Abderaware, uh, just started a blog this week. And yesterday he said he had a thousand visits. In one week, he just wow. he got to a thousand visits. And that's that's the power of it now. Now I have a lot of Google power. Um, in fact, the MSN spot team <laughs> was sort of mad at me last night because I pointed at one of their pages that they didn't really want people to know about too much about. <laughs> and it's all over Google now. He goes, how the hell did you get that listed on Google <laughs> so fast? So, and I go, yeah, well, I have a, 
a Google page rank of seven. So anytime Here's I another find, question for you, Robert. Yeah. Let's say uh let's say somebody out there, a .NET developer, wants to utilize the blogs to to learn about .NET. And we heard, you know, people like Marcy saying that she learns a lot about about it just from reading the blogs. Yep. Well, where does one? I mean, there's a million people with their blogs out there. Where does one start? Where do you go? I, I would start reading uh, the the weblogs, uh, the .NET weblogs, which are uh, weblogs.asp.net. Okay. And there's about 300 people who aggregate onto that page. It's not real. I mean, it's active. So if you visit every hour, you'll see different posts come up there. Hmm. Um, and generally, anything that is interesting in the .NET community gets, mm -hmm. will get up there somehow. And you said uh, something about RSS news aggregators, and is that worth doing? Uh, yeah, a, I would read a blog for a little while. You know, yeah. So is this for you? You know, is this the kind of news that you like? Um, and then try, you know, try maybe NewsGator or um, NewsGator. Oh God, there's. Uh, Speed Demon, which is really good. That's done by Nick Bradbury. Um, he's he's the guy who did a home site for Alaire, which sold the oh, yeah. media. Yeah. His his uh, app is very nice. Uh, I've got Radio Userland is what I, I use right. in, in my uh, as my blogging tool. They have a nice aggregator. Um, and what? How would you one. use an aggregator? What is that? It's what just is, an app like the. Um, Newsgator is a dot, .NET app that runs inside Outlook. So if you're always in Outlook, uh, consider Newsgator. If you want a standalone app, there's Feed Demon or... Uh, One know, of the problems I have with Outlook is that there's just too much information there all the time. My inbox is like my, you know, my cluttered car, you know. It's just yeah, well, it adds a new folder. <laughs> right. It adds a new folder to Outlook uh, called RSS feeds or something like that. Okay. You can name it whatever you want. And so then basically you point it to the blogs that you want to listen to? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Most blogs will have a little XML icon on them. You, if you look around the blog at the bottom or on the side, right. you'll see a little uh, orange XML art icon or an RSS icon. And that's the feed. So you can uh, click on that and then cut the URL out of your browser and put it into demon there's also if you want to watch um, like all the blogs on um, all the dot net blogs like at weblogs.asp.net there's an RSS feed or there I'm sorry there's an OPML icon which will let you import all of the blogs into newsgator and now you'll have 300 blogs to watch <laughs> so Robert if I have newsgator and yeah. I have it in uh, Outlook yeah. does that mean that when a new message comes in that I want it just shows up in the folder and if I reply to it will that go on my blog or somebody else's blog or what uh, well it, it, how does that in work? newsgator it's just a it's a file so you can forward it to your team you know like at, at Microsoft if I see somebody writing something interesting on their blog, I'll just forward it as an email. Okay. I, I can also post to my own web blog from that tool. So if I see something interesting, I can say, I can click post and it'll uh, bring up my little editor and then I can type some more comments on it and I can hit post and it'll go up to my blog. Um, okay. Yeah. But if you wanted to reply to that blog, you'd have to go to the blog to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably 70% of the blogs have comments on the, on each post. So if you come up to my blog, you can click on comments and you can leave a little comment there for me. So I, I can uh, interact with you. You know what it sounds like, Robert? It sounds like some this is dying for a killer app. Yep. Well, it, it, blogging is a killer app. Actually. No, no, no. I mean, I mean yeah. something that brings it all to the desktop and, and makes it all easy. I, mean, I agree. I, I think we're going to see uh, some innovation in the next few years. I'm, you're already seeing, I mean, God, this year I've seen maybe 10 or 15 different aggregators come out uh, from various people trying to come out with a different one. You know, I mean, uh, Greg Rennick, ah, God, what's his last name? Greg is the guy who wrote uh, NewsGator. That just came out a few months ago, hmm. and uh, that's really neat. And he's, he's innovating. He's coming out with a new uh, version every you know month or so. With new features, mm -hmm. are these all free freeware? Not all of them. Um, Newsgator, I think, costs twenty nine dollars uh, to buy it. Doable. Um, some of them are free. There's there's uh, RSS. I mean, there's some. You might just search on Google for RSS news aggregators. You'll find you know forty of them. Right. And probably half of them are free. So right, and but you that. but the one you use is Newsgator. 
Yeah, because that goes into Outlook, and that I've tried a whole bunch of them, and that was just the one that worked best for my well. That's valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. MSDN is going to host .NET Rocks, and we're upping our bandwidth to 10 megabits locally, and you can save up to 25% on your favorite third-party tools by becoming a member of Club.NET Rocks. For $2.39 a year, you'll get all the shows for that year on audio CD, fully indexed, one week before they go online. Yeah. Hey, we didn't talk about cost if I wanted to start a weblog. Yeah, you know, actually, there's, that's there's, a great a great question. Um, you know, uh, one of the regional directors, Robert, yep. recently asked me. What did he ask me? He he was basically saying that he wanted to set up a blog, and I said, you know, he he said he would, but he doesn't have the twenty nine dollars a month, thinking that there was only one option. So yeah, I, wow. no, there's actually quite a few free ones. Um, Mike Amundsen, who's another regional director, has started a service called Era Blog. Dot, yeah, oh, Era he, Blogs he or does Era Blogs. Server. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he's giving them away for free. Um, if you want to write on a specific topic, like if you want to write at the PDC or write at uh, uh, write a Longhorn blog, you can certainly write to me, and we'll figure out a way to get you a free. Uh, PDCbloggers.net. We should mention that. Yep. So there's there's already 150 web bloggers signed up who are going to the PDC. So and there's a whole RSS news feed and a, a web blog aggregator. A website. You know. So all this stuff just makes it easier for people who have no life to get together and share the misery, right? Absolutely. Basically. Right. <laughs> well, hey, my my next question is: you said you subscribe to about five hundred of these. Yeah. How much time do you spend uh, reading web blogs every day? That's a good question. I, I, reading them, I spend maybe an hour to two hours. Oh, well, that's not and bad. And writing them, I spend another hour, to, well, two hours to four hours. So, okay. All right. So yeah, that's that's <laughs> considerable. I'm pretty hardcore. <laughs> Yeah. But that's what I mean. You see my blog, and some t some nights I'm posting fifty things. Yeah, and uh, that's so you don't play many Xbox games, I take. No, it. no, <laughs> that's my son. <laughs> no time for that crap. So. <laughs> my son doesn't have a blog, so he can Xbox. <laughs> uh, so how, what what's the traffic like? I mean, you've you've posted some numbers that were pretty cool about about your website. Uh, I about have your no blogs. idea, really, and <laughs> there's how, a reason how, for that. Uh, a lot of people are reading me through news aggregators, which totally skews the numbers. Right. Um, and also, I my my tool just doesn't give me very good stats. Uh, so we what we need to do is in this killer app that we're going to write, Mark. We need to add. <laughs> now we're writing an app. Yeah, right. We we're going to need to add uh, web service based uh, transaction logging and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I, the better you can look, the more you can learn about your readers, the better the tool is. Um, sure. Radio shows me where people came from, so if I instantly know if somebody linked to me, uh, because people start visiting me from you know Dave Weiner's site, for instance, uh, and I'll see that in my refers page. There is a, a a hit counter, I guess, that I watch, but that doesn't show me too much. It, I don't really care about quantity. I care about who you know the quality of the people reading me, right? Uh, and the quality of the conversations I'm having. Sure. Um, USA Today called me on Thursday, so I know they're reading. Wow, <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, so and that makes me far more excited than saying, you know, I have a thousand readers. Yeah. Or I did um, a lousy .NET Rocks radio show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear you guys are having pretty good traffic too. <laughs> we are sort of like the audio blog of by default. Uh, yeah, I guess no one else does does this. No. Really. No. Uh, it's really cool, cool service you guys are doing. 
And you, it, you're very diligent about it. Uh, Zane Thomas opened the blog up uh, less than a week ago, and he's getting a thousand visits a day. Cool. And I was the main person to link to him. So wow. Wow. I'm guessing I have around a thousand people a day reading me. Probably more than that, right. I would say. I don't know. You know, it, it it's tough to tell. Um, it, yeah. Particularly because the uh, number of hits you get, you know, if you just leave a news aggregator running, like my my news aggregator at work is running right now, and every hour it'll hit somebody and um so that skews the numbers you know what what are the real numbers i don't know i to tell you the truth i think it's a small number it's a small number yeah you know, it, it, around a thousand or less so hmm. it's uh and i have one of the more popular ones um and that's the what's interesting about blogging it's micro publishing it's right most blogs are published just for their their friends and family you know right so, yeah. One guy is writing a blog, and he, all he wants is five or ten people to read it. And it's better than dealing with email. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, Robert, I bet you'd be surprised. I, you know, a thousand sounds low to it me. It sounds very low. You know, I, I, I know, you know, down down in Georgia, I know at least 20 people that read your blog. Wow. Okay. And that's just, you know, that's just people I know yeah. around Atlanta. Anecdotal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's my way to <laughs> keep my ego in check. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you can start getting really freaked out when you realize everybody's here. <laughs> well, it must it's like be... being on stage and seeing 2,000 people. It's like, ah. <laughs> well, it must be weird. Since you showed us Feedster.com, we've been going out there you know, pretty regularly and looking to see what people are saying about us. And uh, yeah. there's been some great comments. I mean, I can't believe yeah. the number of people that have commented on the show. And we we learned a lot about our listeners by reading the blogs that they're you know, uh, we'd known this before, but it's a very popular thing to download our show and burn it to disc yep. and to listen in the car. And there's so many people doing that, that, uh, uh, that, that really caused the bandwidth crunch because people would come to our site and download every show. And it's just like, click, 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 <laughs> click, 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 click. We'd look at the logs and there'd be like a, you know, a hundred requests from one guy in, yep. in the content, in the, you know, in, ten, in a 10 minute span. And, uh, you know, those are 50 megabyte files. And if you multiply that by shitloads of bandwidth, you know, shitloads of requests, uh, that can really cause problems. So what we've done, by the way, is we've got at least one mirror site up. We're getting more mirror sites up. But we've come up with another innovative way to solve the problem, and that is by offering the shows on CD. And we're going to offer them on CD uh, a week before they show up on the website. That sounds uh, really cool. Yeah, it's going to be a subscription thing. It's going to be cheap. And uh, we're also going to sweeten the pot by throwing in a lot of discounts from tool vendors and things like that. And Excellent. Yeah, the, di the discounts from the tool vendors are, are going to be far worth more than the subscription. That's right. They're like yeah. an average of 20%, I think. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That's right. It's going to be a good deal. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. I, it's uh, fun having a conversation with people. And uh, I think it will help Microsoft out by uh, – having a feedback loop that's far richer than, uh, you know, just sending an email into a black hole and never hearing from them again. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. Way, you know, I, I can point at somebody and say, you know, I point at a lot of anti Microsoft stuff too, and try to have a conversation with them. Um, and I point at Linux sites and, you know, I try to, I try to watch the marketplace and have a conversation with the marketplace. Speaking of that. Yeah. Um, you read, read this open letter, to Sun from Merrill Lynch? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And uh, this uh, was basically a letter that Merrill Lynch, uh, a, a memo they wrote to Sun, basically saying, get your shit in gear or, you know, nobody's going to buy your stock anymore. Yeah. Well, they're trying. Um, I, I've i taken a lot. Of it, before I was a Microsoft employee, I took a lot of pot shots at Scott McNeely because uh, I didn't think he had a vision for the industry. And every time I heard him speak, all he would do was bash Microsoft. Yeah. Um, but I actually I less, listened to their latest product announcements, and he, he did a little less of that this time. So yeah, um, that was one of the things they specifically said was that uh, his attitude wasn't helping his. Yeah, company. he was a cr contrarian. I guess is what he was called. Is that right? Yeah, I I just don't believe in the in the uh, centralized model. It's just uh, something I'd, I I. 
you know. Apparently, I, neither I, do the millions of Linux users out there. Yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, it, it, his vision is we're going to have a big honking server, and we're going to give you a lightweight device on the uh, client, and you're going to carry around a little smart card, and you know, you go up to the, up, you know, you slide it into this client, and then you can get to all your information. Um, yeah. And I just don't believe in that model. I it's just anti what I what I studied and what I believe in. Um, you know, when you're in a, I fly down to Silicon Valley every two weeks, and when you're in the plane at thirty thousand feet, you know, if you have a thin client model, you're screwed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, where on my tablet I have all my docs. Outlook now works like completely offline, so I have all my email. Um, you know, I have all my MP3 files that I've had and that I've put mm -hmm. on my system. I have all my photographs. I have all my uh, budget documents. And power you got all those yeah. blog RSS feeds you yeah. downloaded before yeah. the flight. Yeah. In, in fact, great I read a lot of them on the plane because uh, it downloads the news aggregator, downloads everything, so I can go through you know a couple weeks of web logs and catch up on all the ones that I didn't read very carefully. Yeah. So. Oh, I got to tell you this. I saw I saw a guy at a conference uh, a couple of years back wearing a T-shirt, and the T-shirt said, "My parents visited son, and all they brought me was this dumb terminal." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at to segue into Longhorn, if you look at what Longhorn's doing, it's putting more and more power on the client. You know, I cool. knew it. We're going to show off a, a 3D compositing engine, which is just awesome. Uh, we're going to show off a file system, a new file whoa, system. Whoa, 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 back up. 3D compositing. What yeah. is that? Yeah. you got to come to the PDC to see what it is. We're, we're going to be there, man. Just, we're a there. <laughs> just a teaser. I'm not allowed to leak and get fired before the PDC. <laughs> right, we you, wouldn't want that. All right, <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess, because I have no idea. I'm not yeah. on any betas or anything. 3D yeah. compositor means that it's going to put together... Well, you, you know, it, take take what you can do with a computer today and just take it to the next level. Um, well, I could well, I could I'd, think a lot of yeah. things. You know, I'd, I'm imagining you're going to see a lot of mind blowing stuff at the PDC. Yeah, I can't um, wait. You know, take what what would you like to do with video? You know, um, what would you like to do with video games? What would you like to do? With Mark's that? laughing. You can't say that on this show. Well, that's okay? what I'm thinking. You know. <laughs> The reason that we have video. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you were talking about animation. Well, would you, you know, there's there's going to be a whole slew of demos that just run run through what what Longhorn's doing. It's hmm. a massive change for the industry. It's like. Um, but as you were about to say, you know, it's more than just uh, animation, graphics, video, 3D, or whatever. You were about to say something about a yeah. new file system and. It's a, there's a new file storage system, so you know searching files is going to be a lot easier. Somebody told me, I think it was Chris Sells, that, uh, and I think this is for the record, yeah. that uh, Longhorn's going to make it very easy for you to move from PC to PC and have all your data. Yeah, he yep. did mention that. Yeah, um, certainly, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a roaming profile. It's a big problem, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it, hmm. you know it's uh, we're being pretty transparent. I mean, especially since this thing's not going to ship for two or whatever years, right? And um, we're bringing people in at a very early process. Uh, this is the earliest I've ever seen Microsoft release an operating system out to the public. I think it's critical timing too that uh, you know so many people are are jumping on Microsoft's case about security and stuff. Yeah, um, you know which is actually we can talk about that. that one of the things my my weblog got slammed on is uh, hyping up, overhyping Longhorn, you know, and saying, well, why don't you guys fix the XP problems first, you know? Uh, right. And this week, I believe we're going to have a major announcement on security and Windows XP. So. Oh, right. cool. Um, That's cool. Um, you know, the I, I recently got into a debate online, and we're going to talk about this in the next show with Jonathan Zuck. But I recently got into a debate about Microsoft. Being, you know, with an open source guy, and he was just bashing Windows for being full of bugs and stuff, and yeah. and his pro his Linux computer never crashes, and this and that. And I went uh, out my, to my uh, Linux computer crashes. So. Well, of course, and <laughs> you know, it's not just the computer, and it's not just the operating system you're running. It's all the software that's written by people, some of which has bugs, some doesn't. Yep. And uh, I went out to the Red Hat Linux list of uh, 
of uh, vulnerabilities that they post as they come in. Yep. The la- there was 15 of them that had come in in the last two hours. Yep. Right. And they were, some of them were absolutely heinous. Microsoft does not have a good record on security, and it's, part, it's mostly due to the fact that we have most of the computers in the world. Right. And we're the biggest target. Biggest target. Yeah. You know, and if Linux had 80% or 90% of the market share. But what I'm saying here is that. You know, they would be the biggest target, and you would see all the vulnerabilities there. You would, but you would, but they do have vulnerabilities. And that's the thing I'm saying is that they do. Yeah. And you just don't hear about them because Absolutely. nobody cares. No, that's yeah. right. You get, you get this uh, kind of spin at times that, that it's rock solid. Right. You know, and it's not. It's You're just right. bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the latest spin is to, uh, is that a mo- monoculture gives you an unsecure. Yeah, that's what David right. Greer was supposedly saying when he was. Yeah, and that's a compelling argument, but. Look at what you know organizations do. They buy one operating system. You know whether they go with Microsoft or Macintosh or Linux. You know most organizations that I've studied go one way because it's too expensive to have three different operating systems with three different machines. Right. You know. Um, so what you're going to have is micro monocultures. You know? Right. And they're still attackable. Uh, there's still vulnerabilities on all operating systems. It's just too difficult to make a, a 50 million line, you know, operating system uh, secure. Uh, I think this week we're going to announce something that's going to bring us dramatically closer to making it secure. But I can't guarantee that you you won't be able to break into it. You know. Right. I don't sure. think anybody in the world can. You yeah. know, it, the number of lines of code in a product like Windows XP it was just. It's way too hard to make sure that you caught everything. You right. Know? Yeah, actually, I, I I remember hearing this guy speak. I don't even remember his name now. He was talking about security. But I, I thought what he said was perfect. You know, security is not about making sure that no one can get into, say, your house. Yep. Security is about knowing when someone has broken into your house. And being That's able to true. stop them. And being able to stop them. Yeah. And, you know, that the same thing pl- applies to computers. Yep. That's true. And... Uh, you're going to see us do things with firewalls from now on, uh, on every machine. You're going ah. to see us, you know, do things to authenticate, you know, RPC calls and stuff like that. So right. you, you're going to see uh, us take some uh, real noticeable steps to make it much harder to get in and make it much more likely that things will get caught. Right. Uh-huh. So is this, uh, this part of, uh, you know, Bill uh, uh, Gates announced, I guess, about 18 months ago, yeah. The trusted computing initiative. Trustworthy. Yeah, Trustworthy I think uh, you know it's a it's a process. Um, All right, give us some goodies about Longhorn. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Longhorn's a, a bunch of different technologies um, wrapped up in an operating system, and the code words you're going to hear at PDC are uh, Arrow, which is the user interface. So it's a dramatically different user interface than. Now, how could how could it be dramatically different? I mean, um, is it different under the hood, or is it different the way you use it? It's different under the hood. It's different on the way you use it. Uh, it's easier. Uh, it's nicer looking. When you see it at Fry's, you know, if it was shipping tomorrow, if you saw it at Fry's, you would say, oh, my. You know, there is something different. So, Robert, what can you tell me about Avalon and some other Longhorn technologies that people need to know before the PDC before this big announcement. Yeah, let me just iterate through the major things that were announced at the, or sessions that are going to be in, uh, talked about at the PDC. Okay. One is the new user interface, uh, and the code word for that is Arrow. At the PDC, um, the builds that uh, um, attendees get won't have Arrow on them, but it'll have an interim step hmm. um, to Arrow, but we'll be showing a little bit of Arrow and giving an idea of where we're going with the user interface. So the alphas and things that have we've seen screenshots of are not Arrow? No, they are definitely not Arrow. Oh. Yeah, you have not seen anything like even what the PDC attendees are going to get. See, that you hear that siren good. in the background? Yeah. That means uh, we're talking about Longhorn. They're coming for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're going to see a dramatically new user interface. Okay, so we haven't seen it. Nobody's seen it yet. Nobody's seen it yet. Uh, in fact, they don't even let me run it on my own computers. Wow, okay. So. Now They're I'm really curious. trying to keep yeah. this top secret. Yeah. Um, 
Then underneath the user interface, there's Avalon, which is the APIs to push around the user interface. So all new APIs. Uh, you no longer need to use Win32. You all the Avalon APIs are managed code. So, so it's all .NET. Programmers, .NET. Yeah. .NET programmers become uh, world class citizens now. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And really have have a lot of power uh, to uh, build really graphically rich uh, applications. So in other words, there's some new additions to the next version of the framework that are going to support this technology. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's only going to run on on uh, Longhorn though. Yes. Yeah. This is all a new operating system that'll run on, you know, a machine that's coming out in two years. Right. So, <laughs> so we'll have that issue to deal with if we're writing .NET programs. We're going to have the Avalon hooks in there or not? Yeah. Um, right. Well, you can architect your app to run on today's system, and it'll run on Longhorn. Sure. Fine. Just not but take if you build advantage. an app that ex- exploits all of the Longhorn stuff, you know, that uses the WinFS, the new file storage system. Or uses um, the new uh, Avalon APIs. Yeah, those won't run on uh, Windows XP. Okay, right. that's good enough. So, and then underneath, there's a new file storage system, uh, WinFS, they call it, which will let let you uh, write metadata. It'll have a whole consequence on how you architect your app. Um, for instance, Outlook uh, today stores its contact information inside of its own app and really other apps can't get to that Yeah, the PST system. file. Right. Yeah. In in the WinFS world, that gets exploded down to the hard drive and split up. And uh, um, so that has dramatic consequences for how you uh, architect apps and build apps. And it will uh, give you a far richer set of capabilities. Huh. And this file system is the mythical SQL Server-based file system we've heard yep. about? Right. It's derived from Yukon, which will also be announced at PDC. Um, Huh. And um, I don't know if it's a subset or superset. Right, <laughs> I, right, I, I right. say it's derived from because right. it's, it's sort of is, it's related um, to it. It's, it's related to it. It's a brother <laughs> of Yukon. Okay. Um, Son of Yukon. Yeah. So those will be uh, <laughs> some fun sessions to go in and see. Well, my interest is peaked because you yeah. know there have been photos of leaked versions of Longhorn out. Right. You know that people have shown and. And the user interface didn't look any different. And now that no. you're saying that, oh, no, that's not nay-nay, I say. Nay-nay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I say nay-nay. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> that the actual user interface is something we haven't seen yet. Yeah. No, you have not seen it yet. Cool. Um, now, I remember Chris Sells saying that, and he's a pretty hard guy to impress, that when he went to work for Microsoft and they showed him Longhorn, that he just couldn't believe it. Yep. I saw it right before I took my job, and that was the clincher. Uh, really? When I saw it, I said, oh, my God, Microsoft is awake and uh, actually doing something interesting. Yeah, Saul said exactly the same yeah. thing. He saw Longhorn, yeah. and, and he jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think when people see it, they're going to say, oh, okay, you guys hired some uh, good designers for once. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah. Microsoft's hiring some impressive people. They are. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the the team that did the user interface is world class. So I yeah. I think people will be impressed. Hey, they got smart and hard Scoble. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was smart or not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I remember we'll there see was how a... much uh, market share. <laughs> yeah. Now, you how have... many people got upgrade to Longhorn? I'll see in three years whether that was smart or not. <laughs> now, Robert, you have sort of a, uh, a reputation as being a little loose-lipped, so I'm actually very impressed <laughs> that you're holding out on all this Longhorn stuff as you are. It's, yep. uh, <laughs> we it's can't a... beat it out of him. Come That's on. right. He's a different Scoble now. Yeah, yeah I, I learned my lessons. I got, I got the whiplash, whiplashes on the back. You know? <laughs> Those scars still burn, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much yeah um, what else is there let's see so there's a new user interface there's a new file storage system um, there's new APIs for the user interface Don Box's team or actually Yasser and all those guys are mm-hmm. working on uh, Indigo which is right. like the next version of SOAP uh, mm-hmm. and I'll let them uh, talk about that. It's, uh, it's going to dramatically change uh, how computers talk to each other. 
So a bunch of interesting sessions. Don's agreed to uh, do a show with us at the PDC, so his show is going to be coming up pretty soon here, yeah, folks. Yeah, I, I would expect that he has a lot he would like to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> They've been uh, doing some really remarkable things. That's great. Um, and I mean, geez, we're only talking about Longhorn. At, at the PDC, you're going to see uh, Whitby, which is the next version of Visual Studio. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about that with uh, yeah. Paul Vick, Amanda Silver, and Scott Guthrie, actually. We just did a show with him. Yeah. Yeah. And there's going to be uh, Yukon, which is the next version of SQL Server. Right. And also this month, we're shipping a new office, so that'll be it in the exhibit hall. They, so what's next year's PDC going to be like? I mean, I if you know. guys are shooting your wad this time... Uh, <laughs> Actually, you know what? You, you're you passing out Kleenex or something. Yeah, smoking cigarettes next you'll be time. Smoking cigarettes and passing out Kleenex. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. There's actually a PDC only when Microsoft has something major to announce for for developers. Right. Um, a major new initiative or something that's dramatically different. They just if uh, they don't have something dramatically different to announce, they just do tech ed. Right. Go to right. And send all the developers to tech ed. Yeah. Um, what else is there? There's the new Yukon. Well, you know that we're uh, doing a show, at, a .NET Rock show at the PDC. Yeah, right? that's on Sunday night, right? Yeah, Sunday night. Oh, yeah. I have a room number. Uh, I'll put it on the website. Right. A link yeah, to the page. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll, I'll uh, tell everybody about that on my web live. Okay. So. Yeah, it's going to be 6, 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. Yeah, I think it's 6 p.m. on Sunday night, somewhere yeah, somewhere where, near the BOF sessions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have uh we're going to record the show. It's going to be Hollywood Square style questions and stump the panel with all it's the regional directors. Bunch of regional directors. <laughs> oh man. So what else is going to go on at the PDC? There's uh the new spot watches are going to be shown off. Okay, uh, and they are? Yeah. What's that? Uh the new watches that um uh, Microsoft is coming out with uh, like a watch like, wear. The, uh, like the Timex data link. Yeah, sort of like that, but even better. It gets data off of satellites, so you can uh, program the satellite to send you, you know, your all right. Come on now, or your weather information. Come ooh, on ah, now. Ooh, ah, you're serious, are you? I'm serious. I'm very serious. I, I, I gotta, want one. You got to be kidding me. A, a uh, watch you're gonna be in exhibit hall, man. A watch with so. a GPS unit in it. Yeah, look for MSN director spot. Cool, uh, cool. I want one. And what else is going to be there? We're I mean, toy boys here, so. Stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's the new office. Um, I think the Xbox team has a few new things to show off. Uh, we're having we have little Xbox pods. Around. All right, let me ask you this: yep. the new interface to Longhorn isn't the Xbox interface, is it? Oh uh, no! <laughs> All right. I'm just just checking. <laughs> no, I, I actually, you know, one of the things that I. There's several business opportunities that Longhorn will open up. One is interactive gaming because uh, video games on Windows XP really required the gamer to take over the entire screen for performance reasons. Uh -huh. With uh, Longhorn, they don't need to do that anymore. So now you can have you know flight simulator in a window that doesn't it might not even look like a window, and you can have uh, interactive pieces that are written in Avalon that talk to that video. Uh, video game. So you could have a whole new kind of video game come out of this that uh, uh, hmm. doesn't exist today. Which is, I think you're giving us some insights into the user interface that we shouldn't be getting here. Oh well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I have to give you some leaks. So. <laughs> right, right. That's very intriguing. Yeah. So it doesn't look like a window. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Regions. Well, you can, Think about that. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mark is uh, going to be doing a talk at, well, he's already done it by now, yeah. at Dev Connections, uh, where he's doing some advanced Windows form stuff. He's actually got code that can take an image, a picture, yep. and turn it into a control or a form. Awesome. It'll trace the, the outline of the image. Right, and create a region that oh, wow. maps to the uh, whatever the outline of the graphic looks like. Looks That's like. awesome. Yeah. Some good stuff. So what else, out. Uh, I mean, if you look at Longhorn, why why is Microsoft doing it? We're looking at the trends of the computing industry, um, right. and what you know, what are some of the major trends that are going on? Uh, one, system more and more systems now are coming with GPUs, you know, with uh, graphic accelerators that are. Oh, okay. I thought you said CPUs. Yeah, I was going. Them. Yeah, yeah, GPUs. they do. <laughs> graphic this processing is news. units. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, which are. Uh, you know, when I bought my first GPU, you know, it cost me $300. Now that same GPU is $39. Wow. 
Yeah. And, hmm. uh, you know, two years from now, that same GPU is going to be, you know, 10 bucks. And you could put it in a watch, for example. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Call it spot. Oh. <laughs> um, you're seeing hard drive space go way up. You know, and the right. number of files that uh, a computer user stores is going way up. It's getting um, to the to the place where I can't manage my files anymore. Right. But, yeah. I mean, I have uh, 5,900 photos that I've taken in just a year. Yeah. Um, and how do you find any of those? You know, so how do that's I why find the my wedding photos from last November. That's why and, the SQL Server helps out a lot there. With yeah. Exactly. Searching. Query, query the file system. You know, so all you have to do is to predict what Microsoft's going to do. All you have to do is look at industry trends. You know, right? Uh, you're looking at the cell phone market. Look at spot smartphones. Um, the phones are getting richer and richer, and now are now almost you know, all the phones sold here are coming with cameras. You know? Oh yeah, they're like little PDAs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so the new smartphone group will be there uh, showing off their new smartphone, which they're finally shipping in the United States. Yeah, I heard about that. That's great. Yeah. Um, so send that to at... Franklin's Net, 302 State Street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Suite 513, New London, Connecticut. Yeah. You're looking at the home entertainment systems, you know, and we we call that the 10-foot experience. So, you know, Longhorn has both a two-foot experience, you know, for your computer that you hold in your lap or sit at a desk with, and a 10-foot experience so you can – see how we're going to use uh, Longhorn in, in the living room or whatever. Um, Isn't that just the length of the cable, basically, that we're talking about yeah. there? I mean, uh, <laughs> no, but it, the experience has to shift as well. I mean, <laughs> if you look at the – we just uh, shipped the new Windows Media Center. Um, so fonts have to be bigger, cables yeah. have to be longer, yeah. and your yep. story. I mean, yeah. uh, what else is – no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the new Windows Media Center uh, guys will be at the uh, exhibit hall as well, showing off their new stuff. Now that's that hasn't gotten a lot of press. The Windows XP Home Media Edition is it? Yeah. Uh, is this something that's going to continue on? I mean, that didn't oh, do yeah. too well. We just had a big launch party at the uh, this week, this last week here, and at Microsoft. Well, that sort of didn't do too well, though, did it? Oh yeah, it did. We had more than three hundred news stories written in all the media. Uh, but did people buy it though? I mean, I thought that uh, they bundled it with a couple of machines, right? Yeah, I don't know. I. I I still have. I'm. I'm still uh, struggling with that because it's still too expensive for my budget. You know, right. Even I work for Microsoft. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't have unlimited funds for my personal. Yeah, they're not really pushing it either. Right. I saw. A flyer. Uh, they are. They're. They're mm. making a big push on it, and Maybe I think now. you're going to hear a lot more about that at the PDC. Maybe now they are, but. Uh... Yeah, you know, a few months I, ago, I, I I learned about it by reading a flyer at the local Microsoft office. I know this is I, one problem with Microsoft. It is so big and doing so many things yeah. that anything that isn't you know Windows or Office seems like it isn't getting the attention it deserves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's a real problem for some of these uh, teams who you know have have really cool stuff but get lost in the you know I mean at the PDC I expect UConn and Whidbey just to be lost because everybody's going to see the new user interface and the new file system and the new Avalon APIs and that's all they're going to talk about on the web logs and they're they're not going to have time to absorb what's new in Yukon you know right. and Yukon's a major new product you know? I, I'm looking forward to seeing Yukon I mean you know I I, yeah. I know about Whidbey already so that that's maybe not as as attractive to me as Yukon is well if right. you think about it that's another reason why you want to be keeping uh keep listening to the show because we're constantly going to be talking about these new things i mean right. these are going to be the subjects that our show is going to focus on in the next yeah. year or two and uh so there you go mm-hmm. yeah so you, you know and you look at the trends and uh and back to the trends you know and and that's what we're going to be exploiting is, is giving people a better computing experience um, in 2005 than they have today. Um, you also, we're working a lot on fundamentals. I mean, there's a new TCP IP stack in Longhorn. There's a new security model. There's a new app delivery model. Um, you, you basically look at what uh, Windows is not doing well today. We're, we're looking at that too. We take all the feedback that we've gotten from all the different sources and we say, hey, how can we fix this? How can we make the industry dramatically better um, and get people loading software again and get, getting them right. to trust their computers again? Interesting that you said a uh, new TCP IP stack. I hadn't heard that. What was wrong with the old one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure when you go 
I mean, the, I guess uh, Windows internal sessions they'll explain why. If I could, if I could think about it for a minute, maybe security is something yeah. that could add at that yeah. level. Right. Yeah. I'm sure security had something to do with it, but look at the uh, trend in computers now. And today I have a tablet that I can walk from wireless access point to wireless access point, um, and it doesn't work really all that well. Um, right. How can you make it so that it works perfectly? You right. Know? I mean, I look at Outlook, how Outlook today is so much better in dealing with offline uh you know, with an offline state than it was just a year ago. Right. You know, or two years ago. So you know, there's a a lot of work going on underneath the covers that uh, I'm sure we'll be hearing about for the next two years. And right. One of the problems with Longhorn, to tell you the <clears> truth, <throat> it is massive. I I've been reading the internally there's this uh book of Longhorn, which is sort of the vision statement for Longhorn. It's hundreds of pages long. Hmm. It is um, dramatically massive, and to learn everything about it um, takes months. You know, wow. and we're going to pour our everything we can into the thirty or forty hours of content at the PDC. And right. You're only going to see the tip of the iceberg. You know? Well, maybe that's a good reason for Microsoft to start uh, really initiating developers about this now. Yes, right. why, that's, rather than waiting two years and going, you know, boom, here it is. That's exactly why we're dry, we're um, showing it off so early. I mean, Windows ninety five, the general public didn't get to see it until what five months before it shipped. Right. right. Uh, this time, you're seeing it two, maybe even more years before it ships. Um, part of that is to get a better feedback loop because yeah. the more people have their hands on the bits, the better the feedback is, uh, and you know, you can you can. You know, people will tell you, hey, I hate the new UI here, and we can fix that. We can change it. Yeah. Um, well, I got to tell you, perfect. for me, for one, I am just, this is like, you know, I keep saying it's like Christmas, you know? It's like, yeah. uh, it's like a birthday party here. Yeah. And, it's, like, uh, it's like one every week, though. You know, we hear more stuff every week. Yeah, that's a real problem. I, I As an evangelist, um, I'm just worried that we're pushing out so much that... It, People's ability to cope with the change is going to be a little bit, uh, a, a, be a problem. You know? Yeah, could um, be. The other, the other reason we're doing it early is to um, help developers build apps and start mm -hmm. planning their apps. Yeah, that's important. Um, for instance, if you're in Adobe Photoshop, for instance, Adobe Photoshop works on a 24-month launch cycle. You know, so from the day they start planning to the day it launches, it's 24 months. Well, that's 2005. So if we want a, uh, a yeah. Photoshop version of Longhorn, or a Longhorn version of Photoshop, sorry, to ship, we need to help Adobe or help you know any developer who wants to come out with a product you know for 2005 and be out on day one. And clearly, it, our goal is to have hundreds of apps out on day one. You right. know, Bill Gates announces this at Comdex or wherever. Uh, he wants a pile of software behind him. Mm -hmm. You know, he can say, "Hey, all these guys have already shipped, you know, Longhorn versions," and uh, off we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be just like the Windows 95 launch, and the, the, that's pretty much the model that we're using for right. uh, launching this as well. Well, it's uh, I, again, I can't wait. Mark can't wait. I'm sure, and our listeners are listening with bated breath. And uh, but I think it's a we're about out of time now. So uh, okay. Uh, let me let me ask you. I know Mark's got a last question here. My last question to you is: uh, Do you have any killer apps that you want to uh, tell the people about, or utilities, or little things that you've downloaded Ooh. that you're really happy about? The latest thing is Skype. Skype. Ah, uh, yes. Y P E. It's a little uh, audio telephone voice over IP kind of thing. It's by far the best quality I've ever heard. Uh, it's better than my cell phone. Hey, I got a Skype story for you. Carl and I have been using this, and uh, we were on one night recently. Yep. I, I get a call from a guy in Australia, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. And he goes, you know, I was just out on, on Skype looking for someone in the U.S., and basically I guess you can go to a directory and browse and see that I'm online. Yep. And he, he decided to call me. This yep. guy's in Australia. No latency. It was perfect. Yep. Uh, clear audio. I was amazed. Yep. I've had that experience with people all over the world. It's yeah. a really great, great product. And it's in beta right now, so it's kind of feature, uh, you know, challenged. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but it is, like you said, a good quality. We Mark and I were talking the other night about code and stuff for an hour or so. 
on it. Mm-hmm. Great. Yep. We get do. a get a headset. That's that's my advice. If you're yeah, going to use true. it, get a headset. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, cool. Before we jump off, let me congratulate Carl on being named an MVP for Visual Basic. Ah, oh, thank you awesome. very much. Yeah. yeah, it was a surprise to me. And an um, MVP is a most valued professional. Yep. Yeah. I was an MVP for five years. So that's yeah. a a great honor. I was uh, amazed to learn there was only a handful of them, less than a thousand, I think, total. Yep. Total. There's a, I think there's 1,200 last year, and now it looks like the group will be going to 1,700 MVPs. Okay. Well, there you go. But, Still yeah, much. we'll have a big MVP thing on Saturday too. So that's right. Yeah, so cool. it's nice. I got a nice backpack, and they gave me some goodies and things. And awesome. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I didn't get them. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you one of mine. Here. I'm jealous. <laughs> All you got to do is go to the store and buy something for. 10%. I'm going to quit my job so I could be an MVP again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Take All it right. easy. Thanks. Right. Take Talk care, Robert. Later. Okay. Bye.